Welcome, friends, to another edition of Tiffin Box TV. Today, I'm speaking with a storm chasing wedding photographer. And if you don't know what that is, we're about to find out. His name is Mike Olbinski, and he is based in Phoenix, Arizona. And he and I have been friends for the longest time, and I've always looked at his work and said, Mike, we got to get you on the show, man. We got to get on, get you on the show, and it's never happened until right now. Finally, I finally, I finally pinned him down. I said, "You got to talk to us because uh, he's got a movie coming out on Monday, which is today, and we would love for him to talk about his entire process, his entire passion for chasing storms." Mike, welcome to the show. Thank you. Appreciate you having me on. Finally, <laughs> indeed, indeed. Uh, tell me a little bit, uh, in, in terms of just sort of getting caught up, give us a background. You are obviously a wedding photographer, but you also have this passion for for watching, observing storms. And I've, you've just given me a bit of a, a sneak peek of the, the, the movie that's coming out today that's uh, mind-blowingly, I mean, it's stunning. It's stunning. So Thank tell, you. tell us about how you got started with that. Um, the condensed version is just, you know, about six, seven years ago, my, uh, my daughter was born. I was getting into looking at lightning photography online on wonderground.com. I was watching storm chasers on discovery channel and I just wanted to start shooting pictures of storms, um, especially lightning. It just fascinated me. And then, and then my daughter, she was born. I just like, I got to start, I got to take pictures of her. She's beautiful. And so, you know, I was using a little macro lens camera, like a, point and shoot and I try to get lightning with that and take shots of her and once I got my first lightning strike with that I'm like I need a DSLR I need to do long exposures and so we sold all our like DVDs and all this stuff to raise money to like buy a, a Canon XSI Rebel XSI and it kind of started from there I started taking more pictures of her I started going out and doing that uh, light storm chasing and stuff and um, and you know people ask me you know some friends like hey can you do our like Christmas photos that's always kind of like the story of how it happens and I never wanted to shoot weddings um, but I did do a couple because people begged me and then there was like a third or fourth one my friend and I flew to Malibu um, came back we flew there that morning in the airport that night exhausted and I was like that was incredible work we did today like I am really proud of it they were so excited and it was I was like maybe I can do this sure. and so at the same time I'm you know I'm also chasing storms and it's just all kind of coming from the same place and going on at the same time what what does it mean to chase a storm for you? Like what? Again, I, I I'm trying to get to the heart of like <laughs> why would anybody want to do this in the first place? I don't. You know what? It's really hard. People ask it all the time, and the answer is just like you can't help it. Like there's something built inside of you. Probably like some people just can't help taking pictures of like the Milky Way. Like they just they'll go out and hike down you know a mountain by themselves in the middle of night where there's bears and all this stuff and they'll set up their camera to shoot milky way because they just have to do it and it's the same thing for me you know we grew up in the i grew up in the desert here all we get are the monsoon storms in the summer it's hot but then you get this massive thunderstorm and the lightning out here is fantastic our storms are so high based mm -hmm. that the lightning travels so far to the ground it's beautiful um it can cool the temperature from 105 to like 75 in a second when the storms move through oh, wow. so it's just like what we have here i think you know i grew up with my with my dad and i like sitting on the back porch watching thunderstorms it's just like in my brain and and before i even got into photography i would look at the radar i'd post on facebook to tell people storms are coming to phoenix like it was just and then when i started chasing it i didn't even know people did it like that show on discovery channel right. woke me up because i saw a twister but i thought it was a movie i just didn't get it right. and then i'm like storm chasing. i'm like oh my god people do this like they go out and chase and and it made me realize, you know, I don't have to wait for a storm to come to my house to take pictures. I can go out after it. Right. And then it's just, of course, like, it's just part of me. There's a whole culture of storm chasers, and they all feel the same. And it's weird how you're just like, you can't help it. You see a storm, you have to go. And, and it's, That's fantastic. It's, ama it's amazing. It's an amazing um, experience. I don't know. How does your wife feel about you running off looking at um, lightning and thunderstorms and things like she's that. She's amazing. I mean, like this last film you just watched, I dedicated to her. My last one, I did the same thing because um, she supported me from day one, even though I wasn't making any money. It was just something I loved to do. And from the early set onset, I, you know, we had a little girl at the time. She was about a year and a half, and I'm like, hey. I'll just take her with me in the car and she can watch a DVD while I chase Are you and serious? you can have a night to yourself. Yeah. And so, but I mean, that's because of that, like that's now our like family thing. Like she comes along, she's almost seven now wow. and my three and a half year old, he comes along um, when they don't have school later in the summer. But 
um, that's kind of how it started for me to go. And but she's always she's just amazing. I mean, there's not a lot of spouses. I know a lot of spouses and people out there that are like, why are you storm chasing? Like, I don't get it. You don't make any money. They make it really hard mm-hmm. for their you know significant other who's like, this is what they're like kind of born to do and what they love to do. And she's always like just supported me and been right behind me. And and then it didn't help. You know, it helped as well that I started making money from it at some point. So there you go. There you go. Uh, speaking of making money, how do you make money? Uh, off of uh, either a video of the storms or, right. uh, or, or of the still, the still photo- photography you've posted uh, yeah. have just completely blown me off, uh, <laughs> uh, just out of the water because they're right. just so amazing. I appreciate they're, that. They're, they're, they, I, I, you've got to send me a few so I can share it with my oh, yeah. my audience because I think when they see it, they'll understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. Every time I look at it, my jaw drops. I'm going, "How the heck did you do this?" You know, I, and to put yourself it takes in that a lot kind of, of work. Situation, yeah, I bet, I bet. Yeah. Talk to us a little bit about that process, and what, yeah. do you, what, what do you do? I mean, do you just sort of uh, watch the radar and you just say, "Well, okay, I know exactly what's happening," and and yeah, you, I mean, it's it's experience. It. It's experience. You know, when you go out, when you, there's two different kind of beasts I chase on the plains. You have to be out there for like I was this last year that from the movie The Chase I was out there for 12 straight days and it takes that kind of time to get those kind of shots and you're basically just going after everything all day trying to forecast where they're going to be and hoping you get on a good storm and having help sometimes from your friends that are like I never been to Rapid City I have no idea where to go someone's like you got to go to the Overlook that's up on top overlooking the city. I'm like, I don't even know about it. I get up there and I get amazing lightning shots thanks to these people helping me. So there's there's luck, there's friends, there's support, um, but it's mostly just relentless. Like you just have to, you can't just, people sometimes get amazing weather shots because they go out their front door and a storm was there and they got lucky, mm-hmm. but to get them all the time, all the time or to right. try to get them all the time, you have to do it. And so, and then in Arizona, we have like three months of storms in the summer and so it's just a you know every day look at the forecast, see where they're going to be, see what's going to happen, decide if I'm going out early or if I'm just exhausted from chasing like seven days in a row. So I'm going to wait till five o'clock, the sun's going down, then I'll see if there's something within an hour where the light's better, and I'll just you know not really go crazy today. And yeah, um, so that's kind of the deal. And then as far as like you know making money and stuff, the you know I got into it doing the stills, but they don't necessarily make as much money. I still license photos and stuff every now and then, but. Um, I started time lapsing, and the and I got really kind of lucky with the third ever time lapse I did was this huge dust storm that rolled over Phoenix, and it went viral, and I licensed that all over the place. You know, Al Gore, climate change stuff, licensed it, and it was just in all kinds of documentaries and things, and it made me realize first off that people like that and they need stuff like that, and also I loved it. Like it was almost as I mean, it was just as much passion as taking a photo for me. So. I've just like gotten better and better and realized, you know, the more stuff I have and the more stuff people see, the more they need it for things. And the other big one was, you know, that really confirmed it or affirmed it was, you know, being out and catching a supercell over Texas in 2013. And I posted that one and that one went viral and it was in the Thor movie. It's been in car commercials and Vonage. It's just, it's still licensed it to this day all the time. And, and so some of the big ones get licensed a lot, and some of the little ones, you know, I'm surprised about. People are like, oh, I want this little lightning clip from this one film. And I'm like, great. You know, it's like $500 here and there, stuff like that. So you can't count on it. You don't know when it's going to happen, but some really good things have happened. And even the Super Bowl was here in Arizona this year, and they licensed, um, they just gave me like a flat fee and took all my storm stuff and put it together in promos on ESPN leading up to the Super Bowl. And, you know, stuff like that just happens, and you don't. You just don't know what's going to happen, but it's definitely making money for me and more money for me. Although the weddings, of course, are probably like double that. And that's, you know, yeah. all those together really help. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Talk to us a little bit about uh, insurance. Do you insure your equipment? Do you have? Yes. Have you been ever rained on and, and oh. gotten everything soaked? Um, I, yeah. I mean, I use Canon 5D Mark Threes, and I have a Mark II as well. So I have three cameras I shoot with. I mean, the Mark III fell over once into like a puddle of mud and the whole like side where, where you plug stuff in was in the mud and caked with mud and it kept taking pictures. So, I mean, these cameras are tough. I don't, I'm, I'm probably not a good person to talk to about stuff like this. Cause I, you know, I see other people out there and they've got like a rain coat or something over their camera and they're really protective of their gear. And, and I just like, I'm chasing storms. There's no time for me. Like, I feel like I'm in a hurry. I mean, when I'm done shooting, it starts raining. I grab my stuff and I just, for the most part, I'm a little better now. 
Like, I'll take it off the tripod, sometimes put it back in my camera bag, but a lot of times I'd leave it on the tripod, throw the legs, and just throw it in there and go because I got to get to the next thing. So I'm horrible with my gear, but honestly, I've been in plenty of storms where my camera's like, it's raining and there's water dripping off it, and they're fine. Like, they're weather sealed. As long as you don't, like, dunk it, submerge it in something, it's going to be fine. So the only reason I don't like the rain is if it's coming at my lens and it gets on the lens, then it kind of ruins everything. Absolutely. But if I'm in a storm and the rain's actually blowing towards the storm, which happens a lot on the plains, I'll sit in the rain until, you know, it's dangerously time to go. Like the storm's actually getting too close. And there's a tornado coming or something. But if it's not raining on my lens, I'm going to hang in there as long as I can, you know, Got do it. it. How far do you typically drive to find these storms? <sighs> well, so just a overall ideas i have a forerunner that i bought last last may 2014 may brand new and it's got 57,000 miles on it already in just a year and like what is that four or five months so i mean when i chase in the plains this year i mean i went out there for two days one time and i left phoenix drove all the way to colorado all night slept an hour chased all you know in colorado the next day chased in texas panhandle and then drove home that night all night slept an hour and Albuquerque or something and that trip was you know a couple thousand miles then we went out for a a 12-day chase um, and we did the same thing you know we drove all the way to Colorado and I ended up in 10 states I ended up all the way to Billings Montana and as far south as you know oh close to south Texas or whatever so that was about eight or ten thousand miles just on that trip so you know for me if there's something good there's hardly anything that can stop me I mean if there was something going on if we were doing this, if it was something like Tuesday and like today was supposed to be absolutely incredible in like West Texas, I would have probably driven out there. Like it's just, it's, it also depends. It's a, it's a loaded question. I have goals for what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make these films every year. And like right now it's, it's wedding season for me. I don't really have, it's not really storm season. So I don't sure. know if I'd actually go out there because right. I need kind of a reason. Gotcha. But, right. <laughs> uh, but if I could, I would. I know, right? Uh, if you could, you would right now. Yeah. Um, one last question for you, and I think I think pretty much everyone's uh, probably thinking about this. Uh, when you are out there making these these films uh, or stills, right. uh, how much are you thinking about the environment? Like what's happening around me? Yeah. Like danger. <laughs> like you know what? Just the, the 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 magnificence of what's in front of you. Oh. Yeah, well, so the best story I kind of have for that was that Supercell, that Booker Supercell, the Thor thing, Um, because I had been, I think that was my fourth year going out on the planes, and every time I go out, I go out for a day, fail, go out for like two days, fail, once went out for three days, and it just was awful, and this time we go out the fourth time, I had my friend Andy Holen with me, we go out there, we fly to Denver that morning, and we're making our way to Kansas to chase storms. Um, and we're behind everything. I make like a bad decision, like, oh, we, we should have gone south, but we didn't. We went a different way. We got stuck in hail, and I was too impatient and stopped for gas, and suddenly the gas light comes on, and we're like 15 miles away from the next gas station, and it's hailing on us, and all these mistakes. And then we finally like just stopped, collected ourselves, and we're like, we got to go towards the storm. we got to go south, and we'll get out of the rain, and we'll see it. This is what, you're, this is what you do. And so we finally did that. We got out of the rain, and we look over, and the supercells just – mothership looking supercells just hovering over texas and i'm like i'm like shaking but i'm like i gotta find a dirt road find i finally see a dirt road with a hill i'm like it's got to have a good view but we get up there and i get all my camera gear out and i'm setting it up and i take a picture of you know with my phone and i post it on facebook real quick like we did it and then i just stood back and i hugged my buddy and i'm screaming i'm like like hooting and hollering i'm like got tears in my eyes and we're just sitting here watching i'm like this is what i've been trying to get this is like what i've been trying to see and it's absolutely incredible. I don't think there'd be any reason to do it if you weren't completely amazed by what you were seeing. Because every storm to me, even out here in Arizona, we don't get the good big storms, but they're still amazing. And you go out and you, go out and you see this massive supercell coming at you on the plains, and it's just, it's inspiring, it's powerful, and it's just, you feel so small and so pathetic. Like, this at any moment is just going to blow me over, and I don't know, it's... It's incredible. It's hard to describe. Like I said, it's hard to describe why we do this. And then you stand there and it's just like, you just love it. Some people yeah. want to run and we, and I don't want to run. There you go. And that's a great, great way to end it too, because I think it comes down to being completely in awe and yeah. what, what's in front of you. And, yeah. uh, 
you have a certain sense of respect for what's in front of you too. Clearly. Oh, yeah. So it's not somebody's I'm terrified it's not, of lightning yes, and tornadoes. Sure. And I don't want to get struck by lightning. Right. But I find myself risking things a little more for better shots to be a little closer because I think the close ones are nice. But um, but I'm usually huddling in my car at you know, I set the tripod up and I'll huddle my car for the lightning shots and be safe because I am scared of lightning. No, no <laughs> doubt, as you should be. Yes. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate uh, thank you, man. I appreciate coming on it. the show and talking a little bit about your art. Uh, it is yeah. definitely an art. It, it takes yeah. a lot of work, um, and and you've you've done really well, uh, obviously, because you've, your heart and soul is in it. So, thanks for sharing your your art with us. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Bye. Mm-hmm.